Hey everybody, Aaron from Warmoth here, and today I am going to talk to you about drilling guide holes. So if you're using Warmoth parts to customize a guitar, you're almost certainly going to be drilling at least one or more guide holes. And not everyone is up to speed with uh, the best way to do it or the theory behind it, so I'm just going to go over it really quickly. There are two kinds of guide holes. There are pilot holes and clearance holes. A pilot hole is the hole you drill in a piece of wood so you can drive a screw into it without putting undue stress on the wood or maybe even cracking it. Um, for example, if you are attaching tuners to the back of a headstock, you are going to drill pilot holes so that you can drive a screw into it without splitting the, the wood back there. Um, and a lot of people think that you need to drill pilot holes as small as possible, and that's exactly the opposite of what you should do. You should drill them as big as possible because you want to relieve as much potential pressure as you can. So you want to drill them uh, as big as possible so that the inner diameter of a screw, a screw has two diameters, it has the inner diameter, which is the diameter of the, the shaft of the screw inside the, the teeth, and then it has an outer diameter, which is the diameter of the, the outer edge of the teeth. And to measure that, where did I put it? To measure that, you want one of these. You want a caliper, a digital caliper. And these are pretty cheap now. You can get them all over the place. It's an invaluable tool to have. So to measure the outer diameter, you want to... Just measure the outer diameter of the screw. To measure the inner diameter, you want to use the, the tapered point here and put it right inside those teeth so you can measure the inner diameter. That inner diameter is how big the pilot hole should be. That way, the teeth still have wood to grab, but that inner diameter that is solid isn't going to be putting undue pressure uh, outwards from that pilot hole that could potentially split the wood because that is no good. So those are pilot holes. Clearance holes are uh, a hole that's big enough that a screw can just drop right into it all except for the head. Um, and you need a clearance hole anytime that you want to draw two pieces of material together. So for example, say you're putting on tuners on the back of a headstock you have the pilot hole that's in the wood. The clearance hole is actually in the tuner itself. It's the thing you drop the screw through. So you drop the screw through that clearance hole and then you screw it into the pilot hole and it's able to draw those two things together. Now in the case of a neck joint, the pilot hole is in the neck. The clearance hole is in the body. So the, well, it's actually in two things. It's in the body and the neck plate. So you have the neck plate here, and the screw can drop right through. And then when you put that neck plate on the body, the screw can just drop right, right through the hole on the body too, with no threading at all. So you can kind of see it sticking through there. I have one camera here, and I'm doing this all by myself, so give me a break. Uh, <laughs> so there is the screw coming through in into where the neck would be, and it just it can just float right through that hole. But then when you drive it into the neck wood, it can actually pull those two things together. If the, if the hole on the body was also a pilot hole, so that it was biting into that, you would drive it through the, the body wood, and by the time it cinched up tight on the body wood, there would still be a gap between the body and the neck, and you couldn't close that gap and cinch the neck in because you've already driven it fully into the body. And that's why you can't draw two things together when they both have pilot holes. When you want to draw two things together, one has to be a clearance hole and one has to be a pilot hole. So I hope you guys found that information useful. Uh, by the way, this body that I'm using is just a body that I have sitting around my COVID-19 bunker. I have lots of parts here that I've amassed over the years that will find their way onto a guitar for a while and then I mix and match. I, that, that's really my approach to, um, to building parts casters is I just mix and match parts until I find a combo that's just like, wow, that's amazing. And then that 
becomes a guitar and I and I don't take that one apart anymore. This is a, a great body with a um, flame maple top and mahogany core. I think this is uh, turquoise dye. And I, I love it. It just hasn't found its perfect match yet. And so that's why it's uh, unassembled. But, but believe me, it will find its way onto a guitar soon enough. Anyway, again, I hope you found that information useful. As always, if you have questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments. And until next time, wash your hands, be kind, and keep on picking.